Good afternoon, and it is a bit of an interesting week for the You Talk Show. This week, only three episodes. Glorious leader with the luscious locks over here has just finished a move to the Long time viewers will recall I've previously alleged has a bit of a meth problem. He is hoping that Carl doesn't fall victim. Today, we'd like to look at something we've touched upon previously. Um the psychology of leadership. Kyle proposed a little while ago that making um, candidates for elected office undergo some form of psychometric testing, a psychological assessment to see that they are fundamentally fit, but also have the character traits that make for a good leader might be something worth considering. And Literally anyone who's read a history book has just cringed at what I've said. It's okay. I cringed too. But Kyle, have I missed anything in explaining your proposal? Well, I think... So when we when we talked about it um, for that short moment, um, what you said was that it, we'd be passing off the our responsibility as citizens to judge the political character of a of candidates. Now, the interesting mm-hmm. part about that is that I think that we already pass on that responsibility to of the of the the vetting of candidates, but we pass it on to the media. We pass it on to um, essentially corporate media entities who are lying to us. And they lie to us constantly. They tell us that the Liberal Party are great economic managers, even though they're the worst of the worst. Literally, I would even tell you that one nation would probably be better economic managers than them. And that's saying something. Because Pauline Hansen's idea at one point was to print money, which would lead to hyperinflation. But then again, if you think about it, the Liberal Party under Scott Morrison actually did print money. 8% of Australia's GDP, they just printed more money. And then gave it to the top end of town, leading to more. Yeah, I've inflation. just verified that. What the heck? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you know, she once had the idea to do it. He actually did it. So yeah, I have no doubt that even even one nation would make better economic managers than the Liberal Party. And yet we are constantly bombarded with that they are the responsible adults of economic management. And okay, so, but not only not only do we, if if I could. More got more to mm. say here. Not only do we already pass on the the vetting of candidates, but we pass it on to an entity that that who who is designed specifically to get us to a wrong conclusion, a conclusion that is not in our best interests. And so what I would say is that seeing as we already do this, why not involve people who are actually qualified to give an assessment? rather than very biased corporate media machines who deliberately misinform you. Okay, I see what you're getting at. Um, I'd like to address a quick problem with that argument. Mm-hmm. A psychological assessment would not and should not determine whether someone has the skills to run a country, because True. realistically people should be able to depend on skilled people around them, expecting one person to know everything is kind of moronic. Um, But the second is that if if the choice is reduced to a binary, that this person is fit or unfit, um, and I just have the the choppers flying over the Lebanon to Vout. I can hold you up right there, because the the idea is not necessarily that the... um, the psychologist or the assessment would tell us whether or not they are fit to hold office, it would simply give us information, raw information, such as this person has a messiah complex, um, or, you know, this person um, has a very black and white sense of morality. This person sees morality in shades of grey. You know, this person... Yeah, wait, say that again? Oh, hi. Sorry, I yeah, do I'm have a lot black of black and, and white. And white mor- oh, I you have okay? A lot of okay. Black and white morality. <laughs> yeah, I, I firmly believe that there is no situation 
in which dropping a child out of a windowsill is acceptable for a parent. Not true. And That's yet, the when Eric stuff. Clapton does it, it was a tragedy and there was a lot of cocaine involved. <laughs> Jesus. Okay. I don't even know who that is, but I'm not sure I want to know now, but we'll, we'll maybe another time if you really... <laughs> Okay, you got to stop saying that. I'm going to have to bleep that out every time because telling people where I live probably isn't a good idea. So yeah, so basically I see this uh, as an opportunity to get some solid information um, on on um, to help voters form conclusions, not to provide voters conclusions. The examination, it can be done without making any recommendation at all. It won't recommend any candidates. It'll just say this person has this sort of, you know, morality, this sort of view on, you know, life. Um, you know, they have these sort of problems like, you know, for me to be, hey, Kyle, Kyle has uh, you know, some PTSD still around, probably. I, I reckon that'd probably be uh, you know, the assessment that I get. Um but you know, it's uh I, I think getting that solid information will be a hell of a lot better than getting bullshit from the media. And at the same time, that can be summarized in maybe two or three paragraphs for most people. <laughs> for most people. Okay, most I need people. I need to cut back to where I was at this point because we've gone okay. we've gone off the rail a little bit for the point. Um right. I have the choppers the choppers flying in my head right now of Leben und Vertus Leben. Um because Life Unworthy of Life, a classification used in Germany during everyone's favourite period of history, people who were so fundamentally defective that they were a waste of resources. Okay. Except what actually happened was that medicalization was abused to instead paint people who were viewed by society as less than um to have some sort of biological basis of this it was it was medicalizing discrimination uh, uh, and so my fear my fear with psychology or with applying psychological profiles as a part of the process of um undertaking candidacy for an elected office is that you can say a lot of things in a psychological report and maybe maybe an innocuous remark here or there by itself isn't enough to say yeah throw this person in the fire they're not actually going to be a good minister for roads but you can say a lot of things that can be interpreted in a way that is unfavorable unfairly so and especially if what is expected is just a raw a raw assessment of a person's psyche. Um, for instance, great. Let's say, uh, let's say that you are going for prime minister, and you you have announced your candidacy to be like elected in a seat, and you have a psych profile, and they say you have PTSD. How far is it before someone looks at that and goes, "Oh no, oh no, I remember." I remember my mate came back from the war and had PTSD and he'd he'd blow up over tiny things and and when he got angry you, you couldn't make him see reason. Mm. How if without the tempering of context that a professional would responsibly provide the raw data can be highly misleading because not everyone is a psychologist or a medical professional and it's kind of unfair to expect them to be so. So, but further, I, further to that though, we do expect that people can make a sound judgment based on what a politician presents themselves to be. Those sort of character traits that may be exacerbated by a a psychopath a psychopathology, um, would become evident if they were to interfere in the administration of public affairs. Mm. Well. Yes and no. Um, I think of two things. First is uh, this was actually done on Trump um, once upon a time. Um, yep. And second is that the media decided they would psychologically profile Rudd 
and uh, diagnose him with narcissistic personality disorder, which couldn't be further from the truth from everything that I've heard. Um, and the media have should have with. been held responsible for that because they aren't psychologists either. Yes, but that being said, people who would do that, I imagine many many in, in corporate media, they will do that regardless. Having a clear, on-the-record um, assessment De- uh, with the, the relevant details that would provide clarity to people who would only hear the side of oh this person you know Rudd's got narcissism um, whether, and how do we whereas, deal with the changing of psychology over time <clears throat> well people's understanding has been improving you know we now see things like ADHD and we understand them a lot better um, to the point where it's almost almost not considered a disability, but rather just, you know, a neurodivergence, you know, a different way that the brain mm. works. Um, part of part of why I feel a, little, a lot more comfortable with actually saying that I, I have ADHD. Um, mm-hmm. If this was 10 years ago and somebody told me I had ADHD, I wouldn't have even considered the idea. Because okay, but I let's was... say let's say you get into office, right? You have ADHD, mm-hmm. it's on the record, and let's say that a psychologist says Kyle demonstrates a relatively classical presentation of ADHD. However, um, there is no reason that as long as this is treated, he would be unable to um, maintain productivity in office. Let's say in 10 or 15 years, I know you don't want to be around that long in so politics. Hold, so hold in, because we've talked about it no, no, I need to finish it for a second. Okay. I need to finish this for a second. All right. Let's say that over those over those ten years, um, let's say something happens. Um, let's say you develop some sort of other chronic illness, and it it makes things a lot worse. It means that what should be an effective treatment doesn't work anymore. Are we expecting that we're still choosing whether or not to vote for you by a document that was written ten years ago? Are we expecting to keep these assessments up to date at some sort of window? I, I imagine, I imagine like? that this would be done uh, before every election, essentially. So as, as, the, as soon as the candidate signs up, within a short time after that, perhaps two weeks, um, they'd be given a date for a psychological assessment, um, and then they'd go in for one. So this would, this would happen um, before every election. And a massive liability here. I mean, I'm expected to tell um I'm expected to tell Service New South Wales if something happens to me medically and I can't drive anymore because um I'm epileptic and it's controlled. But if it weren't controlled, I would be expected to tell them and say, Hey, I really can't be driving right now. That's not okay. Um mm. and an election window is a longer period of time than just a year, and that's when I have to get my medicals done. If something happens two years through a four-year term, for instance, um, I think we even have yeah six years six years for the Senate, right? Anyway, um, if something happens midway through your term, um, wouldn't we have to also expect that if your performance no longer meets the profile that you were voted in on, that you would have to submit to evaluation? How would we enforce that? Well, How do we just, make sure that this it, information remains current? Well, that information is particularly relevant when you go to vote. So having that done at the very start of the election would be a... That would be the time, in my mind, to do it. I see... Yeah, you know, that would be the freshest information answer. possible. Yeah. It'd, but it'd, again, it'd be, as I say, people... If we're if we're insisting on psychological fitness, how do we deal with injuries or incidents that well, happen in see, the middle of the person's term? It's not necessarily term? to be clear. It's not necessarily that we're insisting on psychological fitness. What we're insisting on is that the information as to people's psychological states is available for voters. That's what we're insisting on, so that they can make a a more informed decision. Now, this is where the uh, when I mentioned Trump earlier, that that sort of comes into play. Um, Mm -hmm. At one point, he was psychologically examined by a team of psychologists. Um, 
say that five times fast. Um, so he, psychologically examined by a team of psychologists. Psychologically examined by a team of psychologists. Okay, psychologically you, you examined by a team of psychologists. You know, psychologically examined by a team of psychologists. Psychologically examined by a team of psychologists. Congratulations, you wasted thirty minutes, thirty seconds of the two minutes we had. Um, so, so. Before you've Trump was psychologically examined by a team of psychologists, yeah. and they so found that. They, so when I okay, so when I when I was watching it, um, they found that he he had, um, if I remember correctly, issues where it came to um, object permanence. I think I can't. I, I only have a vague memory of that one, but I do remember that they essentially the assessment found that. Um, Again, this is me paraphrasing. They put it in more clinical and formal language than than me. Um, but essentially, mm -hmm. he had a bit of a lack of grip on on, on reality. Which reality. To those, it's also us... worth pointing out that his niece, Mary Lee Trump, is a clinical psychologist. Interesting. Didn't know that. She's gone on record. She's spoken on um, CBS and CNN about the potential psychological factors that may have gone into Trump's various misdeeds and um, into what may have happened with the American people themselves during his presidency. It's been very interesting to watch. Hmm. Interesting. I'll, I'll I'll do some reading about that because that's that sounds like a very interesting. Uh... Very interesting information. But anyway, um, in the short time that we have left, essentially they did a psychological examination um, and the they did not make a single recommendation or even a single judgment um, about, about whether or not he is fit for office. It just gave yep. essentially almost raw data, which, which was that, you know, again, my word's not theirs, he showed a lack of a grip on reality um, and, you know, various other issues that I, I can't seem to remember at this time. Um, I think there were three or four main issues. Um, but that being said, they didn't even call them issues. They just described what it was in very formal terms and that, get, that very clinical and um, formal approach to it with without making any recommendation or without making a judgment as to whether or not that person is fit to or should hold office, I believe that that is the best way to go about it because that that ensures that voters have all of the information that they need. Um, it doesn't tell them how to vote and it doesn't make a, a real judgment on the person. It just provides the information to do so for each, for each voter out there. So that is what I would describe as, as a a good way to go about this and seeing as well there's a good way to go about this and it essentially would be an improvement over the current process. That's what I think would be the uh, the best thing to do. Um, so my conclusion would be yes, do it in this specific way. We have run out of time. I'm but fearful that this is, a, this is a policy idea which is ripe for abuse. I... I know that there is a long history of weaponizing certain scientific and medical worldviews and i would be remiss in my personal moral duties to not point that out hmm. that said if I, you can I convince just... australia that what they want is for the shrinks to make sure that everyone's head is screwed on straight before they're allowed into office please go ahead maybe we'll end up with fewer people like say clive palmer or pauline hansen Mm. Or Scott Morrison, but uh, yeah, like, that, that, there are risks and there are potential yeah. benefits. I'm not convinced are, either way. Yeah, there are risks. Although you know, I don't want to keep dragging this episode on, but I do. I do feel the need to mention um, that again. We already have you know armchair psychologists, particularly <laughs> in the media, diagnosing people. Again, Rudd was, told, Rudd and... was said to be a narcissist. And psychologists yeah. who will come onto news programs and talk about psychology in popular terms, and they will sometimes be asked to comment on a public figure's uh, mental state or fitness or soundness of judgment. It is yeah. already happening. I agree with you. I think having I think having a a very good record of the factual information will actually help that. It'll improve that. Um, you know, essentially, I think what I'm saying is your fears are already kind of existing. 
Although I do, I do see the potential for an uptick in that. Um, so I do see what, what you're getting at there. That being said, we've definitely run out of time. Um, so we'll catch everyone later. We'll, uh, we'll see you on Wednesday for our next episode and then Friday. And for now, excellent. thank you for watching and hope you uh, found this discussion interesting. Have a good one. Take care, y'all.